This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. It is great to be in the house of the Lord one more time. It's great to see smiling faces, even through the mask and through everything. We know that people are smiling, and though there might be things that go on, there's always stuff that goes on. Amen? There's always things that we can find that might be wrong with the world, but we can always find something that's good with the world as well. And I'm thankful for all of the things that's going right. Um, I could focus on, you know, when I have students come into class, the one that may come late or the one that doesn't do right, but there's so many that do do well. And it's uh, oftentimes that we forget just how much good is going on with the world. And so I'm encouraged today to think about all of the goodness that God has done, and I'm encouraging you to think about that as well. Amen. Let's join in prayer. Lord, thank you for this day. We ask that you just continue to be in the midst of this prayer, in the midst of this service, Lord. We thank you for riding with us, Lord. We thank you for waking us up this morning. We thank you for being with us this whole way here. And we thank you that when we came in the church this morning that you were already here as well, Lord. We thank you for being our mother, our father, our sister, our brother, our doctor, our lawyer, everything that we need, Lord. You are more than enough. In this day, Lord, we ask that you just continue to watch over us, not only us, Lord, but all of our church family, Lord, wherever they may be, all over the world. And not only our church, Lord, but all of the churches that are around us, Lord. Not only all of the churches, Lord, but everyone that has known you. And whether they know you or not, Lord, be with them. Guide them all, Lord. Bless those that are all sick and shut in, Lord. Bless those that may not have food to eat this morning, Lord. Give them comfort. Bless those that may not have the money to get the medical care that they need, Lord. Still be with them. Be with us all individually and collectively, Lord. And this day, we will continue to give you praise. For we know that we can't do it without you, and we won't try. Lord, be with us now and always as we give your name praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Amen. Give God some praise Will you find a little talk. Have you had a little talk with Jesus lately? Yes, if you have a little talk with Jesus, it makes it all right. Makes it all right. And we are grateful for you this morning talking with Jesus and now talking with us, being in the presence of the Lord and of us this morning. We thank God for each of you that have gathered in the sanctuary, for those who may be gathering with us in other ways, um, by uh, internet or whatever. We are glad for you, and we are thankful this morning. Thankful to the uh, mail course. Y'all did a good job with that. Find a little talk with Jesus. Makes it all right. And if you, whatever the struggles you have, a little talk with Jesus will make it better. Thank God for you being here this morning. Thank you, Brother Gary, for being on the piano, for uh, Brother Deacon Rodney for being on the drums this morning. And uh, glad to have you back, Brother George. Uh, after your surgery, God has blessed you to be back up. Yeah. Thank God for, for you. Thank God for each of the, the men in the mail course. And uh, thank God for these uh, ministers who are with us this morning, uh, Reverend uh, Monroe Miles on the pulpit and Reverend Patricia Miles in the uh, in the audience there, and we are grateful to each of you for being with us this morning. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, come back to to the visitors, but we are delighted to have each of you with us this morning in the house of the Lord. A lot's been going on in the last. Uh, days, both in the world and, and around us. Uh, we're grateful. We had association meeting yesterday, and a number of the uh, uh, ministers, uh, a number of the folks in this church were involved in that, and we were grateful. I was looking around, and um, uh, Reverend uh, Monroe is the, the treasurer for the conference, and we were grateful for his uh, leadership there for the association. Uh, Reverend Belinda uh, Sledge and Reverend Eddie Weathers were leaders there, and Reverend Toby uh, Hedgepeffer was one of the preachers that preached at the association. So we had a good, good time and a good representation from this church, and we are grateful for all of those. Uh, we ask God's blessings upon us this morning as we gather. I want to say happy birthday to Brother Alvin Leaf, to Reverend Zelda Holland, uh, to Brother Emerson Geraldo, uh, Sister Glenda Leaf, and uh, Sister Hillary Leaf. Uh, all of those are having birthdays this week. And we say happy birthday to Deacon John Turner. Happy birthday to you uh, today. Today, yes, yes. And we are delighted that uh, you are our having a good birthday, and we pray for God, pray to God that you and others will have many more to come. Are there others uh, celebrating uh, anything going on this week? Uh, uh, right now, uh, we are grateful for those. I want to give a shout out to one of our uh, uh, folks, Brian uh, Boswell, who had a birthday yesterday, and I just want to give a shout out to him and uh, ask God's blessings upon him as well. He's uh, connected to this church, and we ask God's blessings toward him. Thank you for those things. Um, now, uh, uh, <coughs> I'm pausing for a moment. Uh, Good morning. What a beautiful day. Look at the sun shining out there. Could have been worse. Could have been the other way. Could have been raining or snowing or whatever. But the Lord brought us some sunshine. Birds are singing. So it's a beautiful day. It's been a long few weeks for old Bernard, but it's, it's all good. Uh, I know Real Milton asked for news, but I totally sat there and drew a blank. But I know on Wednesday, Tina and I are celebrating 26 years of marriage. So it's, uh, I've traveled the last two weeks been on the road and uh, she left out this morning going to Florida for a, a conference so first time in, in, uh, in since we've been married uh, when our anniversary came around came around that we're not together but like the pastor said this morning in the study it's always another day but 
you know, I just asked that God protect her and watch over her while she traveled this today going going to Florida for her week long conference. So it's all good. So if anybody wants to invite Bernard for a meal, <laughs> please feel free to do so. I don't eat a lot, but I will join you. <laughs> but don't tell her I said that. But I know my mama gonna take care of me and look out for me. So, uh, but I will uh, uh, I will go wherever. But on today, uh, as we stated last Sunday, this month is Pastor's Appreciation Month. And we have a tremendous pastor here that gives a lot of his time and energy to this church, to this community. And this morning, I'd like for you to come down because we're going to have some people. We're gonna, each, each Sunday, as I stated, we're going to have some people speaking and, and offer some words for that are coming from their heart as to what Reverend Milton means to them and what he means to their families and to this church. Uh, but I've, I've had a, a guy that I just went to after service last Sunday, and I said, Brother, I need you. And he said, without hesitation, he said, I, I most definitely. So uh, before we get into that, uh, next Sunday, uh, there's a basket out front. Uh, so if anybody, again, and as I stated, anybody that has a card or whatever they want to drop in that basket, feel free to do so. Uh, so there again, we're not asking organizations to do uh, great things. But if you, you've got something, uh, we would like to try to do it next Sunday as far as to give some presentations because we're going to pre do a presentation on behalf of the church next Sunday. But if not, you know, we're going to carry this all the way through the fifth Sunday and honor our pastor. And not only him, but we have some tremendous associate ministers here as well that do a lot to support our church. So we want to thank those people as well. And I know Pastor just mentioned that all of them were involved yesterday. But uh, without me further ado, I would like to bring Brother Art Guy forward. Uh, he's wanting to uh, keep, be straight and keep it clean. <laughs> and be nice. <laughs> but now Art, Art's a good guy. He's good people. And he and I cut up and laugh and joke a lot. And we broke and bread together many times. But this morning, Art guy. That really was a warm welcome, wasn't it? <laughs> Very warm welcome. And the thing of it is, you know, he just mentioned that his wife's out of uh, town. Didn't he just mention that? <laughs> that his wife is out of town. And me being a good Christian, I was going to offer him an opportunity to have lunch or dinner with me this week at a favorite gas station of mine. <laughs> okay? But I'm, I'm going to kind of change that a little bit. Now, I, I want to share just a short story with you this morning, make it a little light in here. Uh, I do a lot of traveling, like Reverend Milton has. Or me, Reverend Milton, I'm going to be clean. I'm going to be clean. <laughs> Uh, so I called uh, Darlene and I said, Darlene, I really need to get that um, last vaccine, that, that booster shot. And I said, do you mind making an appointment for you and I both at CVS? I said, you know, for you and Big Daddy. <laughs> and, she said, and she said, uh, of course, of course. So we went over there to the CVS and she got her vaccine first. And, you know, she's a big lady and, you know, it didn't bother at all. And then it was time for me to get mine. And I said to the lady, I said, is anybody else in here beside us? And she said, no. And she kind of pulled up my sleeve. I said, do you mind if my wife holds my hand? <laughs> <laughs> um, Reverend Milton is a shepherd of God, and he's a contemporary leader. And the two tra traits of an outstanding leader are two things, a person that cares about the people that he leads and he gives back. And the other thing is he's a very good listener and he has a vision and he's had a vision the whole time that he's been here and he's done a terrific job of taking us from here to there. And I get great joy each week by listening to his message because his message is from the gospel. And the thing that I like most about him is that he's down to earth, he's willing to listen, and he's an educated minister, meaning that he's went to uh, one of the best institutions as far as ministry at Duke University. But he breaks it down so that we can understand what he's saying and how it affects us on a day-to-day -day basis. And he gives me strength and joy when I listen to his message each week because the things that I confront each day are a lot of things that he speaks about each day. And what I try to do is implement it not only for myself, but in a very subtle way with the people that I meet each day. One of the things that I want people to learn about me is that when they, when they meet me and they 
and they're in my space, I want them to say hey, good things about our God. Because one day I want to meet the Lord. And that's one of the things I'm, I'm pretty sure he's going to ask. Did you treat your fellow man good? So the four basic things that I like about uh, Reverend Milton, number one, he's educated, like I spoke before. Number two, he inspired. To give you a good idea, for Father's Day and for Mother's Day. For Father's Day, he always gives the, um, the young men and men um, cake. And then the women, he gives roses. So if we really look at that, that's a gift from your heart. That's a gift. And when you're giving someone something, you should be very appreciative of it. And he's saying to you in so many words, I love you. I love you, and I'm the leader of the flock. And, 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 and he's motivated me the same way. And, and I give you a prime example. I do a lot of travel. And now in my house is just me and Darlene. The children are gone. So I guess about two weeks ago, I know that she likes moms. So I bought some moms, and I gave them to her. And it's just to say, hey, Darlene, I'm thinking of you, and I love you. And it's the same thing that he's done. Self-fulfillment. Self-fulfillment means that I think the most joy that he has is giving and helping others. And that's the prime trait of an outstanding minister. And then service to humanity. Uh, Reverend Milton has been in this church over 30 years. And not only has he been a church member, but he cares about everybody else in the surrounding area. He's been on a lot of different boards. He's traveled all over the United States. And what that means is that he's had an opportunity to be in a lot of different situations. So that develops him as a person and also as a minister because he's had an opportunity to see a lot of different situations. So you take that in information, you analyze, and you say to yourself, how do I become the best me? And he's done a wonderful job. And I said earlier that he was a contemporary minister. And what I mean by that, as time has changed, he's adapted. I had a buddy that said to me, he said, Art, you know, some ministers don't adapt. So to give you a prime example, two or three days before he preaches, he sent out a document telling us what to expect. You wouldn't have done that 20 or 30 years ago. So, so that's adapting to what's going on today because people of today is totally different from people of 30 years ago. And as we, as human beings, we have to adapt and we have to change. And being a leader, he's fostering that and promoting that. Um, one more thing. Well, I got a couple more things, but I'm going to cut it short. Uh, <laughs> one, of my favorite, one of my favorite singers is uh, Charlie Wilson uh, from the Gap Band from back in the 80s. His, his number one billboard song of all time was, I'm blessed. Now, now don't, don't worry, I'm not going to sing it. I'm not going to sing it. But I do want to change the title and say that we are blessed to have Reverend Milton. Now, in conclusion, I want to share a, a short prayer with you. So let's shut your eyes and just think here for a second. The richest wealth is wisdom. The strongest weapon is patience. The best security is faith. The most effective tonic is laugh. May God bless you with all of them today and for always. Amen. Amen. We might ought to say that to the end because I don't know how to follow that. <laughs> thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Art, and thank you, uh, Deacon Miles. Thank you to this congregation for all that you do uh, to to show your love and your appreciation of me because I do love you and I do appreciate you and thank God for you. We have. Uh, uh, a lot going on this month. Uh, this month, I was looking at all of the things. You know, it used to be that they didn't put a lot of things on, but now there are so many things going on now. Uh, this is Breast Cancer Month. Uh, 
I was seeing uh, where th where they're dealing now with uh, with uh, your mental health month, and um, this is uh, still uh, Latino month, and I learned that uh, this is also Asian month. So there's a lot of things going on around us as well. But even in this church, um, today historically has been the, the uh, men's day. And so we will, f we will uh, honor that and follow that as well. Uh, but we have started uh, some weeks ago now. We're right in the middle of uh, a time of uh, the, the fruit of the spirit. And uh, so we will continue those as well. So there's a lot going on. Thank you for the appreciation time. Uh, but also now we shall move to, uh, to other things. Um, and so at this point, uh, we will have our uh, scripture and our prayer, uh, our offertory prayer. And then uh, Reverend uh, Monroe Miles will do those. And then... Uh, Deacon Ricky Turner, the, as you know, each Sunday we have had a uh, deacon to share uh, reflections on the fruit of the spirit that we are focusing on today. And so today is goodness, and Deacon Ricky Turner will come and do that following the scripture and the prayer uh, at this point. Uh, before the selection, I will come back for just a moment. Well, good morning, church. Good morning. It's good to see all of you. <laughs> know that God is still blessing in the name of Jesus. Our scripture reading will be coming will be on the back fold of your program. It'll be coming from Psalms 37, verses 23 through 31. And it reads as follows. Our steps are made firm by the Lord when he delights in our way. Though he stumble, though we may stumble, we shall not fall headlong, for the Lord holds us by the hand. I have been young and now I'm old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken nor their children begging bread. They are ever given liberally and lending, and their children become a blessing. Depart from evil and do good, so you shall abide forever. For the Lord loves justice. He will not forsake his faithful ones. The righteous shall be kept safe forever, but the children of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and live in it forever. The mouth of the righteous utter wisdom, and their tongue speaks justice. The law of their God is their heart, and their steps do not fit. The word of God for the people of God. Our blessing of our offertory offering. Let us pray. Dear God, as we have, you have blessed us in many ways. We come, dear Lord, to give back a portion which you have given us, O oh God, that we may be instrumental in growing the ministry here at the Union Chapel. And we say thank you, God. Thank you for all that you've been and that what you have done and that what you're going to do, O oh God. You thank you, O oh God, that you have made it possible for all of us to have a way and to give unto all, O oh God. There's joy in your giving, O oh God, and we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for each and every one that's here in this place that they give accordingly to your Heavenly Father, and you bless them, O oh God, and we say thank you. And dear Lord, we pray for you, this offering to be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom, that someone may know that you are a true and everlasting God, 
and all that we do and say in Jesus' name this day. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Good morning, church. Uh, as Reverend Milton talked about, um, I'm going to be talking about goodness. It's the six, um, I guess, quality or in the fruit of the spirit. Uh, I'm going to get my stuff organized here. So I'm going to start off with the what Webster uh, classifies as goodness. Uh, so the dictionary says it's the quality of being morally good or virtuous. And if you look in your fruit of the spirit, it says goodness is a selfless desire to be open-hearted and generous to others above what they deserve. So Brother Art kind of talked uh, a lot about Ralph Milton. And when you, uh, as he was describing Ralph Milton, you know, a lot of the stuff that he talked about, how Rev is, um, definitely this describes a person uh, that's Christ-driven, right? Um, trying to aspire and be like God. Um, he definitely does things not to say, hey, look what I did, right, um, to get that credit. So for us as Christians, as we grow in the fruit of the spirit, um, those are the things that we should try to do too. So you got the, I just touch on the, uh, the other fruits that have already been talked about, love, joy, peace patience, kindness, and goodness. Um, me and my wife was on the way out here to church, and we were just talking about how closely related the two are, kindness and goodness, and my father um, talked about it on last Sunday. Um, you know, acts of kindness, acts of goodness. Um, you know, we do things for people. Again, you, do you do it to get the credit uh, as... Uh, I'm not sure if Brother Bernard or Brother Art said this early, you know, do you want to be um, remembered as a good person? Well, we all do, right? But we don't do it just to be recognized as a good person, right? Because God gave his son for us. Right? Um, and that's what we should keep in mind, too, that God was selfless in that he gave his own son to save us. So when you think about goodness, you know, think about that. You know, God has blessed us every day. God bless us to make it out here today. Um, and there's just small acts of goodness. And a lot of times, you know, us as Christians, sometimes we don't, we don't recognize that. Right? We don't always give God the thanks that he deserves. Right? But back to us as Christians, we know God is going to be good to us, right? Because as Psalm says, Psalms 23, 6, Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So for us as Christians, we should definitely grow. And I know I have person um, in the fruits of the Spirit. 
my wife, <laughs> one of the ones, patient. <laughs> I, I know my wife would probably say, well, you, you need some work in that category. <laughs> <laughs> As I've gotten older, um, sometimes my patience gets a little thin. Um, but I do try to exercise patience. Um, on my job every day, I go through struggles at home with me and my wife. <laughs> and I try to exercise those patience. Um, kind of switch it down. Y'all, excuse me, kind of all over the place. But um, as you talk about these fruits of the Spirit, um, goodness and good, right? Kindness. Um, when somebody does something good for you, it brings you joy, right? Um, and when you do things for people, it is out of place of love, Right? Love for that person as a human being, maybe not personally, you don't know him personally, but love as a human being and, you know, what would God do, right? God teaches us to love everyone. Um, so, um, give a couple of examples of, for me, um, just stuff that I've experienced. And just recently, last Sunday, um, we went out to dinner, and uh, one of my classmates uh, was out eating. He's actually a preacher now, but it's kind of beside the point. But he uh, he came up to us as we were uh, eating dinner, and he's we we're just talking and you know just catching up. And next thing you know, he opens his wallet, pulls out some money, and say, "Hey." I want to bless you guys. Um, and he didn't have to do that. But that was a place out of goodness, right? He wanted to bless us because he felt that he was blessed, right? He knew God. Again, he's a God-fearing man. And he knows God and God's goodness. And so for him, that was a selfless act. So I say um, to the congregation today, um, again, as you go throughout your, your days, your weeks, um, obviously keep God in mind and the goodness that he has bestowed upon us. Um, but as you go throughout your days, do something good for somebody, right? It doesn't have to be anything big. It could just be having a conversation with somebody, right? And that can make somebody's day, right? So I want to leave you with one thing. You guys can kind of help me out with this. Um, as the saying goes, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Thank you. Thank you, Deacon Turner. One of the things that this experience or with the fruits of the Spirit has done is uh, given us a chance to see our deacons at a different level. And I am just delighted for the words this morning and the words each Sunday that uh, has come from our deacons on these. Goodness. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Deacon. For the last several years, we've had young men in the church to uh, share with us uh, on Men's Day. Sometimes we get caught up in the older people and we forget younger folks. Uh, some of us older folks are cramming for the finals, and so that's all we think about. But there are young folks who have words to share with us 
and we are delighted that we offer that opportunity. Now, uh, Owen, I'm going to guess, I'm just going to guess that your mom and daddy are with you today. <laughs> and we're going to ask you to stand and, and greet us if you'd like to this morning. Amen. Amen. Me too. All right. Yeah. Chip off the old block, is he? <laughs> uh huh. Well, I'm glad you thought of it now so you can get back in the car comfortably. Yes. Uh huh. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> now, uh, on the tradition of, of this uh, is that the person who's speaking will sit in the middle chair. So come on up here uh, and sit in the middle chair. Some preachers don't allow others other than preachers to sit there, but we, we have historically been open. So uh, uh, Owen has... Uh, been around this church for a while now. For a while, I thought he just liked me, <laughs> and uh, and all. And I, I found out that he he liked what this church offered. <laughs> uh, and for that, we are grateful because we have, we have been uh, uh, blessed with Raven, and uh, for over the years. But now we are blessed with Orin. And uh, this morning, uh, I'm. Uh, my uh, uh, words will be short. Uh, I, I did want to keep the pace with the, with the um, uh, time, but uh, I'm, I'm uh, looking forward to hearing from this young man of God who will come and share uh, with us in his own way following the selection by the mail course. Oh, yeah. Then Paul 
gave me the scripture. Oh, yeah. One Friday, I got this son. Oh, yeah. He said, if you don't know this man, Lord, you better run. Oh, what a man. What matter? What Who gave his life for? What matter? Who died? What matter? Who said? He just walked. He walked what matter, 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 then I would like to thank the pastor, the elders, deacons, mothers, saints, and friends for allowing me to speak in front of you this morning on this men's day. My name is Owen Burning the Third, but some people know me as Trey. I'm 26. I grew up in Greenville, North Carolina, in a home with both of my lovely parents, Owen Bernie Jr. and Rosa Bernie, who you just met. Can y'all raise your hand one more time? Thank you. I was also blessed with two older siblings, Janetty Bernie and Jermaine Williams. Growing up, me and my sisters were always in, around, or near a church. Every Sunday, we got up bright and early for worship service at 9 a.m. And every Wednesday, we reunited at the church at 7 p.m. for Bible study. That's one thing my mom didn't play about. She always told me, even on the days I didn't want to go, if you stay in this house, you're going to church. <laughs> And that's what happened. <laughs> Fast forward some 20 plus years later, when I first met my most angelic girlfriend, Raven, she made sure that I knew she was a constant church goer and that she sings in the, the choir and she expects me to come support her in her church. However, at this point, she didn't know I was a church baby myself <laughs> and that going to church was something I've done all my life. So I told her, that's not a problem at all. As a matter of fact, I expect the same for you in my church. <laughs> Similarly to my mother, my father was just as strict about going to church, but also even as strict about getting some work out of me. <laughs> See, I grew up around a lot of older country folk. So I heard all the stories about, you don't know what it's like to prime tobacco, or you don't know, how, uh, you, know you never had to get out of school and work on a farm. And for the most part, they're right. Just from being around them, I got to hear so many stories of work and different things they had to do and go through growing up as a kid. And I thought I'd never experience it. But I guess I and they didn't know who my dad was. <laughs> <laughs> my dad's had me on roofs of houses, plowing farms, clearing acres of land, and everything in between. And at that time, I didn't understand the reasoning behind it at all. See, my parents own a construction company, so work is literally a part of our life. From being three years old, walking around job sites with a kid tool belt, following my dad, to me being 26, walking around the job site with a way bigger tool belt. <laughs> I've learned a lot from my parents that I was taught as a child, and it's never left even as a young adult. Growing up, every Saturday was a work day, or it felt like it. We got up early and commuted to wherever it was my dad had planned for us to work that day. As a child, this was unheard of to me because none of my other classmates or friends had to do anything of the sort. It even got to the point where my friends wouldn't want to spend the night with me on Friday because they knew my, my dad was going to have us working on Saturday. <laughs> so they started coming over after we finished work on Saturday. But then they realized if they stayed on Saturday, that they were going to have to get up early for church on Sunday. So some stopped coming on Saturday eventually as well. 
When it was time for me to go to college, I came up to Greensboro, almost three hours from Greenville, where I didn't have to worry about cutting grass, working on a farm, or any other physical activity my dad might have up his, up his sleeve. I stayed up as late as I wanted to. I slept in as long as I wanted to. I got to be my own schedule. And quite frankly to me, I was living the life. <laughs> it wasn't until after college that I decided to stay down to Greensboro and find my own way. And they let me, even though they explained that coming back and possibly working for the family business would be the smartest decision. I still felt like I had to find my own way as a man. However, I didn't take into consideration that I didn't have enough money for groceries, rent, <laughs> or even some leftover for extracurricular activities. It got to a point in my life where I realized I made the wrong decision. <laughs> I need to go back home and regroup. <laughs> At this time, I didn't realize how much of a blessing it is to be able to go back home with open arms and not have to figure it out all on my own. I also realized that this meant going back to work and saving money, not to just piggyback off of my parents. When I think about this time in life, it reminds me of the parable of the prodigal son in the Bible. To summarize Luke chapter 15, verse 11 through 32, Jesus tells a story of a father with two sons. The younger son asks the father for his share of the estate and the father proceeds to give it to him. The younger son then goes to a distant country and blows it all, blows all the estate he had inherited from his father and was then left with nothing at all. Just like me leaving Greensboro and coming back to Greenville, the son goes back home to his father and his father accepts him back with open arms and throws a celebration for his return. However, the, young, the older brother wasn't as happy about his younger brother's return because he stayed with the father throughout this whole time and never left his side and felt he never got celebrated to the extent his younger brother did. And he told his father this. Nevertheless, the father told his eldest son, we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. To the older generation, I told you my story and compared it to the prodigal son because I want you to know that sometimes it takes time for the younger generation to understand the lessons you try to teach us. I realized that all of those early mornings and different tasks my dad had us doing prepared me for the workforce, having to be up early on the daily. It also showed me as a man, we're going to have to do some things that we don't want to do or don't even know why we're doing it, but regardless, it has to be done or nobody else will do it. Now, I can fix just about anything myself and not have to call another man to come do it for me. Those lessons I learned growing up are now saving me a lot of money and time being a young adult. Being in church all the time showed me structure and discipline. Without that time being in church, I doubt I'd be comfortable enough to stand in front of you saying the things I'm saying now. Time is relative. Just because it takes a little longer to catch on to somebody else doesn't mean it won't happen to you. NBA star LeBron James was said by many to be born the best physical prototype for an NBA basketball player, while Michael Jordan was cut from his high school basketball team. LeBron has always had the spotlight, whereas Michael Jordan had to take the spotlight for himself. However, at the end of both of their careers, it still and will forever be a great debate on who was the best basketball player of all time. LeBron who some say always had the natural abilities and blessings to be a phenomenal basketball player, or Michael Jordan, who it took time, hard work, and dedication to get to the same level as LeBron. And at the end of the day, they both got to where they wanted to be at the top. This same principle goes for us. Just because we see somebody living a little better, walking a little better, talking a little better, doesn't mean we can't do the same. Sometimes it just takes time and God. God, make sure, God will make sure to put you in the right position you need to be and at the exact time you need it, not just when we want it or because we see somebody else with it. God will be God today, tomorrow, and all the days after. Though everybody around us may change, God will stay the same. And just because the delivery to get the gospel to the young people might have changed, the word will always stay the same. 
Let's not get caught up in the delivery of the word, but more so of what's being said through the delivery of the word. That's what really matters in the grand scheme of things. Lastly, to the younger generation, I know how it is. Sometimes when we speak with the older generation, we don't know, we don't understand or get where they're coming from, but just keep living. As my mom always told me, you don't understand now, but you will by and by. And I didn't know what in the world she was talking about. <laughs> but thank God I kept living because I'm starting to see it now. <laughs> we're young, so we're going to get into some things that we shouldn't. And we still have some maturing to do and some experience to go through. But we also haven't seen much yet. So it's hard to understand the reason our parents or other older people around us do and say some of the things they do. But just try to listen more than you speak. That's the reason God gave us two ears and only one mouth. I got that from Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest thing I did growing up still benefits me to this day, and that was listening to my parents and what they had to go through and see and using that and make sure I don't have to make the same mistakes. That's why it's so important for the older generation to keep talking to us. Even if it seems like we're not listening, we are. I can, I can attest to that. It could have been a full-blown conversation, but all it takes is that one piece of advice that seems to stick with you. And that same advice could be what keeps you closer to God. As I said before, it's not always about the delivery, but more so the message. And God and his message will always remain the same. Thank you for allowing me to speak in front of you once again, and I hope you all have a great and blessed week coming up. Thank you. Since I found you, my whole life has changed. Since I found you, my whole life has changed. I tell you, he changed, <coughs> changed my whole, my whole life has changed. Yeah, my Whole life has changed. Look at here. Since I found you, oh, my whole life has changed. Since I found you, oh, my whole life has changed. I tell you, he changed. Oh, he changed. Oh, my.
been done changed. Anybody here been changed? Anybody here been changed? My life has changed. Give God some praise for Orrin, will you? <laughs> the thing about this uh, second Sunday for me has been all of the great young men in this church who speak profoundly and thoughtfully and from their heart. See, if you got something in you, you don't have to make it up. And uh, you did a marvelous job. You did a marvelous job. Yes. Let me just say a word or two about goodness because it connects to what you raised. Because goodness is a, is a trait, as you said, a, a characteristic. We've been focusing on these. And, and I don't know about you, but this has been a powerful time for me. I've, I've found myself looking at that. I thought about it as I prepared for this sermon. There, there I've been going for the last few years to, to uh, a conference in at Hampton University called the Hampton Ministers Conference. Many ministers have gone for many years. I just started going probably five years ago, and then I had to miss two years because of the pandemic. But, but I remember uh, an old preacher. They have a statesman. They called it a statesman uh, time when old preachers preach. This year, it, they changed it and moved it from a statesman. It was an old woman who preached. But those moments have been, been powerful for me. And one preacher, I remember saying that, that uh, I'm glad for some of the things that won't be on my obituary. You remarked about that, Owen, that as when you're young, you make some mistakes. You do some things that when you look back, you say, maybe I ought not have done that. And my dad would sometimes say to me as a boy, uh, he'd say, son, you can do what you want to, but you don't want to do that. Uh, sometimes I did it anyway. <laughs> but uh, it made me think this week as I was preparing for this som sermon, that when I die, I hope that folks would say he was a good man. And goodness uh, deals with, there, there were statements here in this thing, a, a selfish desire to be open-hearted, to be generous to others above what they deserve. And they, they used a, a, a passage, uh, the 23rd Psalm, and that it was interesting in the, in the brochure, they said, goodness and love shall follow me in, in the text. And every text that I looked at, even the King James and the New Revised, said, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. So the goodness becomes not just something that you uh, want to be, but something that you become. You, it, it, it's a part of you. And, and when you take that on, that's when the goodness really then matters. The text this morning that was raised and was read by Reverend Miles raised the, the, the issue that... that uh, steps of a good man, the 
King James would say, are ordered by the Lord. The New Revised says, our steps are made firm by the Lord, and he delights in our way. Though he stumble, he won't fall headlong. In other words, if you fall, you get up. See, a lot of folks, you know, we've seen a few of those around us who had a little too much to drink or these days a little too many drugs, and, and they fall in the mud, and they'll just stay there. But for a, a good person, it, sometimes you slip off the path. You, you ever gone down these roads? Now most of the roads are paved, even our driveways. You know, got most of us, a lot of us now got paved driveways. We don't got plenty of rock on it. Uh, we, done, we done got Gary or somebody to haul us a load of rock and put it in this, this there. But, but some of us remember the days when we used to have to go down this long road to the house. And, and we didn't, couldn't afford a bunch of rocks to put on it. And <coughs> excuse me. In the wintertime, there would be ruts, we call them. And you tried to stay up on the heel of that. But if you weren't careful every once in a while, especially if it rained, you'd, ru you'd slide off into the rut. Well, you see, the point, though, was that you tried to stay up on, off of the rut. Because if you got in the rut, you were in trouble. <laughs> yeah, you get to spin in, and sometimes folk would have to push you out or pull you out of that rut. Well, see, that happens to us that sometimes you fall in those ruts. But, but it's good to have somebody around who can help you out of it. That, that's what uh, goodness does at that point. The, 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 psalmist goes, the, the psalmist goes on to say that, that when I was young, I was once young, but now I'm old. And, and he says here that I have not seen the righteous forsaken. In other words, if you try to follow God, God is going to be with you. I have never seen the, them. He didn't say not asking for bread, but begging for bread. You, you, you see, there's a difference in asking and begging. See, uh, sometimes some of us uh, get used to begging. I see folks are out begging all the time. Now, they make begging a living. Sometimes even in the church, folk begging and living. You, God, I, I don't think, see, I'll ask you once for something, but I ain't going to be asking you no whole lot of time. Uh, that to me sounds like begging. I ain't bothering that. I, I had a child one time who said, Daddy, please, Daddy, I don't do that. You ask me, if I ain't going to give it to you, I ain't going to give it to you. Don't be begging. Yeah, but see, I have never seen the righteous forsaken. For even though sometimes I, I feel like I'm all alone, I, all I have to do is just look around me. And I see that God is there, and so I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their seed begging for bread. He goes on to remind you to depart from evil. See, a good person departs from evil and, and makes good. You know, some folk will call you Mr. Goody Two Shoes or Miss Goody Two Shoes. You, if they do, you ought to take it as an honor, not as, as something evil. For, for we ought to want to be good. Our mouths of the righteous utter wisdom. Uh, wisdom grows out of uh, sometimes bad experiences and learning from them. You see, now, now, the problem with too many folks is that they equate goodness with perfection. And that is a difference. You see, you see when, when the disciples, when they were looking for disciples, they said, look among you and find people of good report. They didn't say a perfect report because every one of us got something that we just assume folks not remember. Yeah, I, I, get, I get upset with, with Christians sometimes who act like they always been good. Uh, I, 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 you, there, there's no fault in me, uh, only because the Lord has forgiven you. You see, see, many of us are, 
need to look at that, and, and, and that's part of the problem. I, I'm going to say this this morning. You see, we, our race, has been taught one of the stigma of, of racism and of slavery was that they taught us how to be crabs. They taught us how to pull one another down. They taught us. You, you Don't go to that mechanic. He ain't no good. You know, yeah, I, 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 I don't, don't, don't mess with them. See, I've been shafted by more of them than my own people. Now, all of them will shaft you if you let them. <laughs> but many of us will run down our own folks. So we don't know how to say you're a good person. We don't know how to say you're a good man. We don't know how to say you're a good woman. We don't know how to say to my child, even though you made a C, I love you, you're a good child. See, we, we, we only look for the, the A's, and if you got an A manners, you ain't no good. If you got an F and you were trying, you're still a good person. You see, many folks uh, look at that, and we don't know how to look for goodness in people. We don't know how to lift one another up and say, you're a good man. Reverend Monroe, you're a good man. Yeah, you preach with deacon brothers. Y'all good men. Uh, you all are good women. See, we, we know how to run one another. Well, look at that run in her stocking. <laughs> Rather than that show is a pretty dress you got on. Or oh, for that matter, you got some pretty legs in that run stocking there. We, we, we know how to run one another down. So we don't know how to say you a good person. We listen to the statistics of our children. And we talk about all of the single parents. We don't lift up the fact that those women are struggling. And they are doing the best they can. And making those children have to come from down yonder up to where they are. We don't know how to say to a person, though you've been to prison now, you're doing well. We thank God that you are among us. We say, well, you know what they did back yonder. We, we, we see goodness grows out of uh, a, a person's heart trying to do what's right for God. If you're going to be good, first of all, you got to walk with Jesus. you got to have some salvation in your heart. Now, whether you got it from the get-go. Some of us, see, I, I, my, my parents never gave me an option to go to Bedside Chapel on Sunday morning. If I stayed there, I'm going to church. Yeah, and so I started doing that with my children. That when you were there, they tell me, I'm not going to church. I said, where you living then? You moving this week? Because you going to church if you in this house. Well, you see, you got to have some salvation in your heart. You got to have some Jesus. Some of us got it from our milk. We, we, we grew up on milk and Jesus. Some folk moved the hard way, and, and somehow or another, like Paul, got knocked off the beast. But they still found the Lord. Amen. You got to have the Lord if you're going to be good. And then you got to follow in Jesus' way. You ever meet folk who've given honor to Jesus who's first in my life and they don't act like it? You got to follow the one that you said. I, I remember back when, when, when I was uh, uh, in a nice position on the national church and and they closed my office here in North Carolina and said, you can move to Cleveland. And when I didn't, then I found myself out of a job. And I found myself saying to me, Irvin, you know that stuff you've been preaching? About the Lord will make a way, you're going to have to believe that stuff. 
You see, if you're going to follow Jesus, you got to believe what he said. Goodness grows out of following what Jesus says. And then, then finally, you got to receive and offer forgiveness. Forgiveness is something that, that a lot of folks want to receive, but they don't want to forgive. We hold in our mind stuff that folk did years ago. We won't let it go. We, it'll eat at you. If you hold on to stuff that, 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 that isn't any good for you, it'll eat you up. You got to let it go. Because when you can live for the day, you will be blessed. You see, many of us hold on to our youth. We want to act like I was when I was 20 years old. You ever seen some old folk talking about, I feel like I'm 20. You know they lie. <laughs> and if they start acting like it, you know they ain't going to fall for long. <laughs> we got to learn to live with what God gave us. That's what makes you a good person. When you realize that, that God has been good to me. Amen. Brought me from a mighty long way. Amen. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. <clears throat> Twas grace that brought me safe thus far. And grace will lead me home. That's what makes you good. That's what makes a good church. When you got good folk in it who trying to do what's right. When you got a family that's trying to do what's right. They'll make you good. Bless you, my friend. Something happened. Has he touched you? Is there someone this morning that he's touched and they want to unite and give yourself to the Lord? The invitation is yours. If there's someone who has, uh, would like to be a member of this church, the invitation is yours. If he's touched you, makes you act different so as we go this week we want to act differently with him and with each other
Are there concerns this morning? I don't always ask that of the congregation, but I'm going to ask it this morning. Are there concerns that you want to share? to my stepdad, Richard Wade, and the Wade family. Uh, my stepdad suffered a heart attack last Sunday night, and me and mom had to take him down to the VA hospital in Durham, but he wasn't breathing too good, and his heart was, you know, troubling him, but uh, when we got him down there and the doctors took uh, care of him, his breathing got all right, and his heart's back to normal, so i like prayer to go out to the family. We pray for the Wade family. We pray for the Corbett family, uh, the family of Norma Corbett. There's much to pray for. It's me. It's me. It's I, O oh Lord, that stands in the need of your blessing. We pray for this divisive world right now. There's a lot of hatred around us. A lot of stuff that makes it hard to be good people. So we ask God's blessings upon us, upon those around us, that we might be what God wants us to be, that we might be good to each other and to ourselves. Let us pray. God, we come right now to thank you for this moment, for you have been good to us. We ask your healing power upon uh, the Wade family, upon we ask your healing power with uh, <coughs> the Corbett family, with those who have been suffering with bereavement, uh, with those who have been suffering with illness, with those who might have been suffering with financial problems. Oh, God, we ask, oh, God, that you be with them and be with us. Watch over us and take care of us. Nourish us with your love. We'll always be grateful. Guide us and protect us and keep us. Nourish us with your love. In your name we pray. Amen. Let us prepare for their benediction. With uplifted hands, you may stand with uplifted hands. Dear Lord, we say thank you that we have come and we have prepared ourselves as we leave here today. Let us walk in faith. And as we walk in faith through the message that we have heard today, O oh God, and we know that message came from Christ above. And may the Lord watch between me and thee while we're absent, one from another. Amen. Go in 